G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the weekend is upon us uh, and things are still just continuing to move uh, quite frantically. Uh, no weekend retracement so far and that's really good. But look, we just need to be mindful that generally there's a pullback on a weekend at some stage. So we haven't seen it so far and look, it's not guaranteed. It's not every single weekend that we have pullbacks, but it's most of them. So uh, at some stage, I expect us to have one. How heavy it will be, who knows, but we might not even get one. The other thing I want to say is for anyone who's new, number one, welcome to my channel. And if you're new to the crypto space, this is what we call a bull run. So a bull run is in full gear at the moment. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news and I don't want to scare people and all the rest of it, but these don't last forever. How much longer this bull run is going to last? Not exactly sure, but that is the million dollar question. And the million dollar question it is, is because you may make a million dollars in this bull run, but if you don't know to get out and get out at the right time, you may lose pretty much a million dollars as well. So not trying to scare anyone or anything like that, just particularly anyone who's new into the crypto space and who haven't, hasn't been through a bull run before, they literally don't last forever. There's a time where it goes into a bear market and it retraces quite heavily. Now there's a story here, we'll come back to this sh shortly. So Tower Block Capital CIO estimates another nine to 22 months uh, of bull run for crypto. So that's interesting, 22 months from now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it could last that long. I definitely think maybe another nine months. I'm thinking anywhere from sort of August, September to maybe sort of August, September this year that is, to maybe sort of February, March next year. But look, maybe it could go even longer. That's very, very interesting and we'll have to wait and see. But for anyone new, we do have bull runs, that's what we're in now, where things just move up very, very fastly. We still will have heavy retracements in this bull run, but once we get into a bear market, then things get really ugly. So just be prepared that, you know, we've got someone here saying they expect this bull run to last another nine to 22 months. So that's basically saying till, you know, around about November this year, uh, carrying on till, yeah, I guess sort of, you know, oh God, what would that be? about September next year uh, would be sort of the 22 month mark. So somewhere in between there, exactly where uh, nobody knows. But anyway, let's move on back to the charts. All right, so well over that $1 trillion mark, now getting to nearly $1.2 trillion. BTC dominance has dropped under 60%. So now we just wait to see how low it goes. And that doesn't mean Bitcoin can't perform well. Uh, it absolutely can, and I believe absolutely will. Um, it's just that altcoins are now really starting to pump as well. And you can see that, like if you're in the altcoins at the moment, they are going crazy. Because we can see here ETH dominance, which is really kind of altcoin dominance, in a way continues to grow. It was down around sort of 8% uh, not that long ago, and now we're up to, you know, 16.4%. BTC dominance continues to drop, ETH dominance continues to grow, and really when ETH dominance is growing, i.e. when Bitcoin dominance is dropping, that is altcoins are going up. Now ETH gas fees are just horrendous at the moment, you can't use Ethereum, and this is what I hate uh, currently uh, about the bull run, is Ethereum, you just can't use it, uh, and most of the altcoins you can't use, the gas prices are just so high, and this is where I think ETH is gonna lose a lot of ground to things like Polkadot, um, Cardano, Tezos and things like that. I still think Ethereum is the best play for this kind of bull run at the moment and it will retrace less but in the following bull runs yeah we'll have to wait and see and whether Ethereum can you know get this full rollout of ETH 2.0 to happen quick enough that you know mainstream adoption because look institutions won't mind this kind of gas fees and really rich people they'll be like oh yeah I can afford you know 50, 60, 100 dollars to you know, trade hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Ethereum, but the average day Joe, like you and me, I don't have that kind of money to, yeah, let get chewed up in gas fees. But anyway, we're gonna move on. I've spoke about that before and anyone knew you'll hear about it further. All right, have a look at this. It is just a sea of green at the moment. Absolutely crazy, have a look at it. This is what a bull run is like, where basically everything is just moving up. It's amazing. It's a great time to be alive. Let's have a look though. What are the big movers in the top 100? What are really starting to move? So 0x, 
Cosmos finally starting to make a move. Uh, stoked about that. Loopring starting to do really well. Maker, Kyber Network doing really, really well. Cardano making big moves. Now, a lot of these, not all of them, Cardano's not, but Kyber Network, DeFi, Maker, DeFi, Loopring, DeFi, 0x, DeFi. DeFi, in my personal opinion, and not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, is where the biggest gains are going to be made. And it's still... It's still fairly early. Again, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. I don't think we top out to the earliest September-ish. Again, maybe sort of August this year, but it could keep running for a whole lot longer after that. But DeFi, I mean, God, look at those gains. This is just in 24 hours, mind you. I mean, have a look at these gains in the seven days. So they've doubled in the seven days. <sighs> Great time to be alive. All right, but there's always a flip side. What about losses? Are there any big losses? No, there's not any big losses. Dogecoin back 14%, but still up, you know, 50% over the last seven days. 6.2% uh, for Swiss Borg, you know, down 4.8%, 4. 4. so 5% for Voyager token. But look at the seven days that they've been up. So no one's going to be too upset by these pullbacks, considering how hard they have pumped over the last seven days. And that's just the last seven days. I mean, altcoins have been running pretty hot for a while. With all this euphoria, though, does me make me think that there is going to be a reasonable size retracement sometime soon. I just don't know when it's going to happen, but I don't think the bull run is anywhere near done just yet. Now, I don't want to, you know, pull everyone's leg and just always talk about all the good stuff. There is some downsides, and I don't want to focus too much on the downsides until it's time, which is around the bear market. But we have a story over here. So Australia Central Bank says Bitcoin, not really money and no risk to financial stability. Uh, I would agree with some of it, that. It's not a risk to financial stability. I would disagree with it not being real money. So we can go down here. Bitcoin is not a payment instrument and it's not even real money, said Bullock. I think there is a lot of fuss about it as a potential asset. Bullock said she didn't see Bitcoin volatility as a risk to the market, a view that was echoed by Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe. Bitcoin is a risk to investors, but not a financial stability risk, Lowe said. <sighs> All right, so we need to break that down. Is it real money? No, it's not real money in that sense. It is the new money. Real money is the old money, the fiat system that we've lived on for so long, the dollar value. That is slowly but dying. The dollar has been you know, dying ever since it basically started, really. Every fiat system has eventually gone to, not zero, because it doesn't go to zero. That's not true. It just it loses a whole lot of value and then they move on to the next one. Once it was Spain was the world reserve currency. Then it was, uh, I think, Portugal. And then it was France. And then it was England. And now it's the US dollar. And eventually that's going to die. Not die, because die is not the word. The US dollar is not going to die. It'll just no longer be the world reserve currency. It loses its value. That's what happens to all fiat systems. So correct. Bitcoin is not money in the sense of what we call money today. I think it will be in the future. More so a store of value. I don't think it will be something that we transact with every single day. I think there will be something else. But I think to say that it uh, is not real money, I guess that's kind of part true and kind of not true. It's not true at the moment that it's real money. In the future, I think it will be considered real money like gold day. But we have a lot of other cryptos that are coming out uh, and have the potential to kind of be, you know, what some people might consider real money. Things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. I just don't think Bitcoin will ever do that. The 21 million supply will see it as a store of value and not, you know, what we call real money. But look, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Now, the volatility uh, is something we need to be concerned about. And they say Bitcoin is a risk to investors, but it's not a financial stability risk. In the earlier days, I would have completely agreed with that. Bitcoin solidified itself. It's here to stay. Look, if you get in at sort of 50,000, there's no guarantees that it's going to stay 50,000 or stay above 50,000 forever. The market at some point is going to top out and then we're going to have to find out what the low may be. But look, we have a story over here. They believe Bitcoin could top out at around 390K in this bull run. So nearly 400,000. If you get into Bitcoin at 50 thousand excuse me and it does top out at three hundred and ninety thousand 
I would say in my personal opinion, not financial advice, you're probably gonna be pretty safe that Bitcoin won't get back down around 50,000 again. But there's no guarantees. And if it were to go down below 50,000, I don't think it'd go too much lower if it peaked out at you know 400,000. But again, there's no guarantees in life. As long as you've done your research and understand the cycles and how it plays out, if you did get in at 50,000 and you didn't sell at the top and somehow you found yourself with it being below 50,000, based on history, and that's all we can go by, is if you just hold for roughly about four years, you're going to be in profit again and well in profit. But that is based on history. That doesn't guarantee that Bitcoin is going to play out exactly the same in the future. But that also doesn't guarantee that Bitcoin, if it peaks out at uh, 390,000, is going to then lose 80% uh, of its profits, which would then take it down to uh, under 50,000. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. It's things we need to keep in mind. But 390,000, that is very interesting. With the amount of institutional adoption, I don't think we'll see the 80%, 90% retracements from the big cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin. I don't think we will see that from Ethereum either, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, Grayscale is buying it crazy amounts and we have a story that actually goes into that all right one more bit of a downer before we move on to some more positive news is the central bank of nigeria orders banks to discontinue uh, servicing bitcoin clients that is disappointing they have lots of problems with money over in parts of uh, africa and i guess this is just their regimes you know stepping in to try and jump on top of it because they don't want people buying Bitcoin. They want people using the national dollar. So very disappointing for people in Nigeria. Hopefully that gets sorted sooner rather than later and doesn't just become uh, an issue because really Bitcoin and some of the cryptocurrencies, not all of them, there's lots of really bad ones and please you know, be careful in this space, but Bitcoin, it's been around for a long time. This is a great way for poor people to not be poor anymore. If they can get into Bitcoin, um, you know, particularly now, let's say they buy into it at $37,000 and it goes to $400,000. Now they probably haven't bought an entire Bitcoin, but even if they invested just $10, $15 or something, that basically is a 10X from here. They will 10X their money. Now again, unfortunately, they may not sell at the right time and all the rest of it, but at least they have the opportunity to maybe 10x their money and get themselves out of poverty and all the rest of it. With their national money, they won't get themselves out of poverty. The national money won't go up. It will stay stable or simply go down like all sort of fiat currencies do. So that is really disappointing. All right, let's move on to some more positive stuff. So Grayscale, like I said, they just keep buying. It is unbelievable. 10 billion in a month. Grayscale's AMU hits $30 billion, uh, 30 billion milestone. So that's assets under management AMU. So Grayscale's massive cryptocurrency purchases continue as the company's, again, assets under management have grown by 50% in a month to 30 billion. 50%, that is unbelievable. They are behemoths and they just continue to grow. All right. This one's pretty interesting. So a mysterious Dogecoin address absorbed 27% of the supply. So Doge has been going absolutely crazy and someone has bought up almost 30% of the supply. Now the top 20 addresses have captured 50% of Dogecoin. So there was something crazy down here. Yeah, there was an address that holds 36 billion tokens. So Doge is getting absolutely pumped on TikTok and you know, it's mainly kids on there, but it's not just kids. And they're trying to get to uh, Doge to a dollar. So I think currently it's worth about six cents or something like that. And if they could get it to a dollar, I mean, that's a 10x plus from here. That's absolutely crazy. I don't think that will happen, but who knows? And there's obviously some people out there who are pretty interested in Doge at the moment. And they are, yeah, they're buying it up at the moment. All right, let's go over here. So Ethereum, look at this breakout. This has been fantastic this is against the dollar so we could see it was just forming this wedge pattern here and i thought again it was going to take till about the eighth which is another couple of days so i thought it was going to take about to here to break out because i thought it would roll over and bounce back up it's just broke out and it's doing absolutely fantastic again it was down around this 1200 dollars mark and now we're already getting up to nearly 
two thousand dollars so we're not too far off it sort of doubling it needs to get to around about 2400 from that but it's happening felt relatively quickly now we did have a bit of a pullback here and again this was only like two days ago so was that the kind of weekend retracement for eth i don't know we'll have to wait and see all right bitcoin likewise same kind of thing we had a little bit of a pullback uh, the other day nothing too sort of crazy and now it's sort of starting to move up but are we going to see something similar with eth and bitcoin is this going to roll over come back down and maybe retest this trend line or we just keep going up and similar to eth do we kind of roll over and come back and maybe retest this and now it might just be a wick that kind of quickly wicks down here or do we just keep pumping weekend retracements happen almost every weekend there's not too many weekends where we don't have one again was this maybe it i don't know we'll have to wait and see but it is very exciting times i'm loving things at the moment DeFi is my bet and again it is it's a very risky space please be careful outside of bitcoin and really ethereum i think most other cryptocurrencies they haven't been around long enough to really you know prove themselves and say that they're legit and here to stay there's lots of other things i am bullish on though polka dot cardano a number of other projects and if you go back and watch you know my videos I'll, you'll be able to see exactly which ones i'm the most bullish on but this is really what i want to focus on 35 billion dollars is now locked up in DeFi. that is a long way from where we were not that long ago i mean have a look at this this is 11 billion only a few months ago every couple of months it is starting to double and this is just the last 90 days let's go all have a look at this since april 2020 things have just started to really boom now again this is after the the crash that happened from the pandemic and now look this is just starting to go parabolic and i know when things go parabolic like this we do need to be a little bit careful i do think there's going to be a bit of a blow off top here and it will pull back but it will look it'll be a blip like this in the end DeFi is the biggest game changer for cryptocurrencies in general obviously bitcoin was the game changer that moved us into this new you know cryptocurrency space and things like that but really i mean you think about the name crypto currency it's about money money is finance so this is where i think the biggest most unbelievable gains are going to be made and look i've made some amazing gains with the DeFi picks that I've got into, but I never put a whole lot of money into the DeFi project. So it's not life-changing money for me at the moment. It's not that I'm gonna have enough in these DeFi projects to suddenly retire and be a millionaire billionaire. I mean, is it possible that that plays out in five, 10 years time? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know about billionaire. I might be sort of millionaire if I'm lucky because I put most of my money into the projects that I believe in, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I did have a lot put into XRP. The, the SEC filing stuff was just too much. I exited from most of my XRP and put things in, put that money into things like Cardano and Polkadot and things like that. But my DeFi plays are doing extremely well. They have far outpaced the gains that I've made in anything else. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. If only I had have put more money into DeFi back then, I probably could be a millionaire right now. But again, DeFi just hadn't been around for long enough and we need to wait and see whether it's gonna be around. But have a look at some of these plays. I mean, Maker, this was under you know one this was around one trillion dollars for all and now look at it six oh, sorry billion billion now six billion Aave 5.17 billion that has been absolutely going crazy I was lucky I bought some uh, Aave used to be Ethland it was a, an old token and then migrated into Aave I picked up four hundred dollars worth of old Ethland and they were ten cents a token and that has by far been my best performer but unfortunately I only put $400 into it. So it's not worth a whole lot now. I only wish I had have put more in, but still I turned $400 into about $4,000. It's sort of 10 x and some from there. So I can't complain. $400 into $4,000, no one's complaining, but that is unbelievable gains. I mean, Compound, have a look how it's doing. Uniswap, I mean, these are going into billions of dollars. I would not be surprised if some of these get into 
the hundred billion dollar mark at the peak and look well into the future again Aave is very very popular i love the Aave platform maker you know it was kind of the start of the whole DeFi space i would not be surprised if some of these maybe the top sort of three make it into the hundred billion dollar mark in the future i definitely think they're going to double digits that shouldn't be a problem the $100 billion mark, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Another one I'm super bullish on is synthetics. I mean, now it's into the billions. Before it was just the millions. So, yeah, this is unbelievable growth. And again, look, synthetics network, 7% growth. That's kind of leading the way there. But in saying that, there's a lot of other projects that have done really well. So that's my... I wouldn't put... I wouldn't bet the house on DeFi. I most certainly wouldn't do that. You want to have some safe assets, some a little bit riskier assets, and then maybe some kind of really risky assets if you want to go that route. But for the really risky stuff, which is a lot of it is going to be based around DeFi, nothing more than maybe 1%, and really maybe 1% of your total portfolio. Please don't bet the house on these things. They are all very new. Yeah, be careful, but I do believe if you find some good projects, and I've said I like Aave, I like Synthetics, I like Chainlink, I like Ren. They are my, they're my kind of blue chippers that I would call out of the DeFi. They have been around for a while. They've got great teams. The chances are, and that's all it is, it's just a chance. It's not financial advice that I'm giving you. The chances are they probably will stand the test of time. They're still going to get hammered in the next bear market like most projects will. So let's say Aave at the moment it's trading around, oh God, I think $300. It might get up to $4,000 per coin. But come the bear market, that $4,000 per coin may quite easily drop down to less than $100 per coin. We don't know. It hasn't been around long enough. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's something we need to keep in mind. Love to know your thoughts. Is Do you think the biggest gains are going to be from DeFi in this bull run? Do you think there's somewhere else that can do better? Again, maybe non-fungible tokens and gaming and all the rest of it. I've said in the video yesterday, I believe non-fungible tokens and gaming more so gaming non-fungible tokens are still happening right now but i think the gaming sector will be really big in the next bull run um that's my personal opinion again love to know your thoughts do you think DeFi provides the biggest gains this cycle all right things are going absolutely swimmingly at the moment just be careful there's usually heavy retracements when these things kind of happen but you know based on what other people are saying the bull run could last for another 9 to 22 months there's no guarantees on that, but that is sounding pretty promising. Imagine if the bull run is going to last a 20, another 22 months from now and how crazy things have got now. That only goes to show how crazy things could get in another 22 months time. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are going amazingly well. I'll see you next time.